The Republican caucus in Congress is split between a very small group of Republican Congress people who are clowns and who wish to basically do their clown act on TV for money and notoriety, and the vast majority of Republicans who actually would like to pass bills that they believe are the best thing they can get for America. That doesn't mean the best bill possible, because the best bill possible is not possible when you have a Democratic Senate and a Democratic president. But there's a group of Republican Congress people who have decided that it is very important that they be very famous. And in order to be very famous, they're going to do things like challenge the speakership of the new speaker of the House, Mike Johnson, who is more conservative on policy than any of them. This would be the same group of clowns who decided to oust Kevin McCarthy for no reason other than Matt Gates had some sort of vengeance plan against Kevin McCarthy. Mike Johnson should nuke this dumb rule right now. And if he requires Democrats to help him do it, then he should get Democrats to help him do it. And if you don't like that, you should blame Marjorie Taylor Greene, who is the one who decided to bring the latest quixotic attempt to take down the Speaker of the House for no reason other than to get her name on TV. There is no logic here. There is no rationale here. There is no reason here. I'm sick of watching the Republican caucus be dominated by people who have no interest in actual conservative policy and appear to only want to get on TV and talk radio. You just heard Ben Shapiro indirectly call Marjorie Taylor Greene a clown for doubling down on her threat to oust Speaker Mike Johnson. Now, I'll keep it real. I don't really care what Ben Shapiro has to say. I'm just here for the show. So with that in mind, uh, Marjorie, care to respond? You're a piece of shit. He's a piece of shit. Wow. Ben, thoughts? F around and find out. Oh, that sounds like a threat. Marjorie, care to respond to that? <laughs> Mm, see, I take it that her laughter is a bit of an indication that she doesn't take his threat seriously. Ben, how do you respond to that? <laughs> Weird. Okay, it kind of just seems like they've both gone full Joker mode at this point. Look, I kid, obviously. I've got to say the amount of random sound bites that I have of conservatives on my computer is genuinely embarrassing. <laughs> but... Let's get back on track. Marjorie Taylor Greene didn't respond to Ben Shapiro, at least yet. But the video that you saw of Ben Shapiro, I think it really speaks to the genuine frustration that Republicans feel with Marjorie Taylor Greene's threat to oust Speaker Mike Johnson. They think it's downright absurd. And after weeks of snubbing Johnson, they actually did meet. And Johnson is responding to Greene by kind of low-key bribing her in a sense. So I'll tell you about that in a moment. But first, I do want to talk about the lead up to this meeting. So that way you have more context. But on top of that, I do want to go back to the last speaker that was ousted because as Ben Shapiro noted, Gates inexplicably ousted McCarthy because of some vengeance plan that he had. And it turns out that's not actually wrong. We all kind of suspected it, but we now know why, thanks to McCarthy, who decided to spill the tea. You made a lot of concessions in oh, the negotiations. Oh, oh, I did. Okay. okay. okay is that Let's get to the bottom of that. Right. That, no, that no, is no, no, such no. a misnomer right. in life. Let me give you the truth about that now. <laughs> and I'll give you the truth why I'm not speaker. It's because one person, a member of Congress, wanted me to stop an ethics complaint because he slept with a 17-year-old. An ethics complaint that started before I ever became speaker, and that's illegal, and I'm not going to get in the middle. Did he do it or not? I don't know. But an ethics is looking at it. There's other people in jail because of it. And he wanted me to influence it. That is pretty damning. The former Speaker of the House is saying his career ended and the entire House of Representatives was thrown into chaos for three weeks, all because Matt Gates wanted to be shielded from a House Ethics Committee investigation into whether or not he allegedly committed statutory rape. Listen, if you're innocent... There's no reason to oppose an investigation, I'll just say that. But as for Marjorie Taylor Greene's threat to oust Johnson, the same isn't true, although I do think that there is some truth to Ben Shapiro's speculation about whether or not this move is for attention. I, I think that's that's obvious, right? But to recap, Greene officially filed her motion to vacate Johnson before the House's two-week Easter break. And side note, don't you wish that you got two weeks off for Easter? I mean, that's just such a long break. But regardless, during those two weeks, she was talking a lot of shit. For example, she likened Johnson to Nancy Pelosi, hilariously enough, and she even 
speculated about whether or not he changed his policy positions because he was being blackmailed. And by the time the break was over, the Washington Post reported that House Republicans were actually dreading their return because they weren't sure what sort of a shit show they'd be coming back to. And some Republicans are even getting the sense that Mike Johnson wants to quit because of all the bullshit. As Politico reports, some are also privately asking if Johnson even wants the job anymore. In private conversations in recent weeks, he's expressed his exhaustion and complained about a lack of sleep and the demands of frequent traveling. When shit hits the fan, members say he'll have some soul searching to do. So dude hates his life right now. And there's a lot of talk among his allies about how he should have handled this situation or should be handling the situation with regard to Green. Because Politico also explains that some of his allies wanted him to just call her bluff and dare her to force a vote on his ouster because they thought that it would fail. Mike Johnson, however, wasn't that confident, clearly, and instead chose to reach out to Marjorie Green. But here's how that went. We, we exchanged text messages over the break. Uh multiple times and, and told her that I really would love to visit by phone or at her convenience. And she said well, she wasn't interested in that. So, mm, okay. you know. In other words, she is power tripping hard and enjoying every fucking second of this. And I've got to say, I'm also enjoying it. So I guess, thank you, Marjorie. Never thought I'd say that, but Thank you for all the wrong reasons, right? Now, Mike Johnson was asked about some of the attacks lobbed against him by her, and his response was funny because you know that he wanted to say more, but he was biting his tongue because if he pisses her off any more, it's over for him. Marjorie Taylor Greene has been personal with this to you. I mean, she says you're, you know, um, basically a deep state operative. She didn't use the word operative, but you're working for the deep state, in essence, paraphrasing. Uh, also, she's attacked your faith. Uh, talk to me a little bit about that kind of personal reaction to the fact that she said some of this stuff. Well, I try to follow all the biblical admonitions as I do every day. And one of them says, you, you bless those who persecute you. I'm getting a lot of practice in that right mm -hmm. now. Um, and that a soft word turns away wrath. And that, um, you know, those who are opposing you, you don't hate them and return, you know, evil for evil, you return good for evil. And so that, that's the way I live my life. That's the way I operate. And so I don't harbor any ill will towards Marjorie, never have. I like Marjorie. Mm -hmm. I understand why she's upset. She's frustrated that we can't score touchdowns on every single play. I don't know. It sounds to me like he just called you evil, Marjorie. You should probably do something about that. Now, on a serious note, there's a difference between being the bigger person and pure cuckoldry, and what we saw was the latter. I understand that he didn't want to engage in personal attacks or gutter politics, but it felt like he was groveling at her feet, which is pathetic because he is the leader of the Republican Party who is afraid of one member. Now, since then, the break has ended, and Marjorie Green has responded to his kindness by spitting in his face. So she doubled down and renewed her threat to oust him. So she sent out a letter to her colleagues, presumably making the case for Johnson's ouster. And here's how she claims that was received. So you sent this letter out to your colleagues this morning. What kind of response have you got? Uh, mostly uh, support. It's been pretty incredible. Everyone's flying into town today, though, so I haven't spoken with everyone. But most of the members I've talked to agree with what I've said. Um, they may not come out and publicly say it. Many are relieved I've said it, and I've even heard within the ranks of leadership uh, there's agreement there. So um, There's agreement from members of the leadership with, your, with what you're my saying. letter, with uh -huh. much of what I said in the letter. Um, mm -hmm. This is difficult to do. This is not what I would like to be doing, but I believe it's necessary. First, we admit the problems. First, we admit the wrongs, and then we come up with a plan for change. I'm working on the changes that I would like to see, and I'll be proposing with my colleagues, um, and I look forward to talking with them about that. Is it changes in terms of specific people who would be the next Speaker of the House? I haven't gotten to that step yet, but that may be something I move toward. Of course, that would be private conversations in our conference. So Mike Johnson seemingly didn't want to call her bluff like his allies wanted him to because if he dared her to bring it to a floor vote, she might actually do it. And I think that's pretty evident. Now, she claims that her colleagues responded well to her letter, and I think that there is actually some truth to that for the fact that opposition to Johnson is actually growing, at least with respect to another issue. Um, the current discussions in our conference meeting this morning is about FISA. Um, but it's pretty clear and obvious and being whispered among the conference. Mike Johnson does not have the support of the conference. Um, the letter that I sent has been well received, and it was basically speaking the quiet part out loud. Um, he's in there urging uh, members to reauthorize FISA, um, and I don't think he has the votes for it right now, uh, is what I'm 
gathering. Uh, we're going to be working on this. Uh, we do not believe in warrantless spying on the American people, especially when this bill uh, carves out the ability for Congress to be notified when a member of Congress is going to be uh, uh, looked at through the FISA court. Um, that's completely unfair. The same thing should apply for the American people. Um, but Mike Johnson doesn't have the trust of the conference, and that's become very clear. Now, she goes on to speak out of both sides of her mouth because she claims that she doesn't have a specific line when it comes to bringing her motion to vacate to the floor for a vote. But later, she says that Johnson's handling of Ukraine and the FISA renewal is going to determine how the GOP conference handles the motion to vacate. So take from that what you will. So she's not being clear with her intentions here, and I do think that that's purposeful. I think that she just wants the threat to hang over his head for as long as possible so that way she has maximum leverage. And to the extent that it's her strategy, I think it's working. Now, she arguably does have momentum on her side, at least when it comes to FISA. And I say this because dozens of Republicans came out swinging against the FISA renewal. And that includes Donald Trump, who explicitly told Johnson to kill FISA via Truth Social. Now, it ended up failing a procedural vote on Wednesday. So it turned out that Marjorie Taylor Greene wasn't necessarily wrong to point out the fact that opposition towards Johnson was building, at least with regard to this one issue. Now, that's not to say that they're also going to go along with her motion to vacate, but it is true that I think momentum is working in her favor here. Now, having said that, I do also want to say that it's super discouraging to see liberals like Mueller, she wrote, shit on Republicans for wanting to not renew FISA for hacky reasons, I guess. Now, they argue that the reason why Republicans oppose the renewal of FISA is because they're in cahoots with foreign governments and just want to hide that fact, but that is totally irrelevant. Warrantless surveillance violates the Fourth Amendment, period. Liberals should not support warrantless surveillance that's unconstitutional just because Republicans oppose it. Furthermore, even if it were constitutionally permissible, we still shouldn't be okay with it because intelligence agencies abuse that power as the Snowden leaks taught us, hence why he retweeted all of the Republicans that were opposed to it. And it's not just Republicans who opposed it. Pramila Jayapal, for example, chair of the Congressional Progressive Caucus, also criticized Johnson, writing on Twitter, This is so disappointing. When Speaker Johnson was on the Judiciary Committee, with me. He was in our coalition fighting for major FISA reforms to protect sensitive data. Now that he's speaker, he's folding the spy agencies who want to violate your privacy. She continues, FISA bill says FBI to notify Congress members to spy on us, but regular Americans can be spied on without a warrant. Our bipartisan judiciary bill required intelligence agencies to get a warrant before spying on Americans. We need to pass the warrant amendment to protect Americans. Exactly. So this is something that should be opposed on principle not due to party affiliation. So it's sad that some liberals are choosing to go after Republicans the one time they've ever been correct ever. Like, let them have this fight, because in this regard, we all benefit if FISA is not renewed. But with that being said, the issue does highlight some of the frustration that Green and other Republicans have with Johnson. He has flip-flopped on multiple issues since becoming Speaker, but I don't think that that's surprising because that position requires a degree of moderation by its very nature, right? Like it or not, you have to work with Democrats, especially when they control the Senate and the White House. And compromise is just part of the job if you want the government to just do its basic functions, right? That's not going to change if you get a new speaker. And Marjorie Green doesn't understand that. So there is opposition to Johnson, and that's not surprising. Having said that, though, Green might be overestimating how much support she has for her motion to vacate. Because even though other people might be frustrated with Johnson, they're not going to motion support her motion to vacate because that's just absurd. You can disagree without going that far, and some of them have come out and publicly vocalized support for Johnson. It's an impossible job. The Lord Jesus himself could not manage this conference. Or this con you just can't do it. I think Mike Johnson is a great human. He doesn't lie like the last guy. I think people don't like dis dysfunction, uh, so that's not good for our side. And with a one-seat majority, it doesn't only take a couple people to create dysfunction. I think Speaker Johnson is working his guts out, doing the best he can with a lot of feral cats.
Small sample size, but you get the point. Even the Republicans who agree with Green simply don't want to throw the entire House into chaos again because they have a couple of minor disagreements with uh, Mike Johnson. And Green was actually asked about this by Manu Raju, whether or not she's worried that she'd be doing the same thing that Matt Gates did. And she said, yeah, you know, she's worried. But actually, Mike Johnson already threw the House into chaos. So what are you going to do? So the takeaway is that she is not backing down. But... I did mention a bribe earlier in the video, and it did come up during the meeting that they finally had. And uh, CNN's Manu Raju explains, after a 70-minute long meeting with Mike Johnson, Marjorie Taylor Greene told us she aired her grievances with him, told him not to move forward with any aid to Ukraine and drop his FISA plans. She doesn't say when she'd move to oust him. She also says that Johnson offered her a position on an advisory board of his. So there you have it. He presumably made up a fake position to bribe her with it. I mean, <laughs> it's a tale as old as time, right? If someone threatens your power, you offer them a little bit of power to co-opt them. Now, whether or not she's going to take that position or have a change of heart, that's yet to be seen. But even if she did choose to back down, I think that publicly she would still choose to drag this on as long as possible because this does benefit her in the sense that she gets a lot of attention and press coverage for it, and she can also fundraise about how she held Mike Johnson, a rhino, accountable. Now, to that I say, good, go Marjorie, at least in this limited sense, right? Because I think that Republicans are genuinely ontologically evil, and the more infighting and self-sabotage that they do, the better off we'll all be as a country. And aside from the utility of this ordeal, I'm not going to lie, I just find this all incredibly entertaining. I lost interest in reality TV a few years ago, and I never really understood why it didn't resonate with me anymore, but I think it's because Congress fills that void, right? This is the most entertaining, batshit insane television show I've ever seen. So, I mean, who needs The Challenge or The Bachelor or Real Housewives when you've got episode 32 of Marjorie versus Mike Johnson or possibly Ben Shapiro versus Marjorie Green? Like, it's all so entertaining to me that, like, this is the only entertainment I need when it comes to reality TV. So, uh, keep it up, Marjorie. Give them hell. And, uh, File that motion. Make it official. Well, she already filed it, but bring it to the floor, Marjorie. Do it. I think that that's what a Jesus would want, okay? Follow your heart. Just do it. Excuse me. Vagina. Ha, 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 